Good morning, and welcome to Worship with St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach, California. Whether you're joining us by Zoom or with Facebook Live, we're glad that you've decided to spend this last Sunday in the season of Lent with us to join your prayers, your laments, your gratitude as we gather in God's name and ask for God's guidance, protection, and care. And I remind you, next Sunday, we begin Holy Week with Palm Sunday and worship at 7 p.m. every evening during Holy Week. So clear your calendars, be ready to walk the way of the cross. Welcome, and our worship will begin soon. Blessed be the one, the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens, Who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. If we say that we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Precious Christ, so wonderful. 
Also with you. And also with. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. 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 Be the
A reading from the epistle to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to Glory you, to you, Lord, Lord, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Oh Christ. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, no, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Praise to you. Okay. I can hear you too quiet. Help us, O oh God, to be masters of ourselves, that we may become the servants of others. Take our lips and speak through them, our minds and think through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire for Christ's sake. Amen. Imagine leafing through the obituary section of the Dead Sea Tribune or the Galilean Times and coming across this announcement. Jesus of Nazareth died peacefully at his home on Passover, surrounded by his brothers James and Simon, close friend Mary Magdalene, and his parents Mary and Joseph. He was 52 years old. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. After a short stay in Egypt, his family returned to Nazareth in Galilee, where he spent most of his childhood. Throughout his adult life, he remained active, especially in his synagogue in Nazareth, except for a few years in his early 30s when he traveled often to Jerusalem, attract, attracted devoted followers, performed miracles, challenged the religious establishment, and proclaimed he was the Son of God. Jesus was quite the fireball. Although many were surprised, Jesus returned to his hometown to lead a quiet life. His neighbors enjoyed his company, his calm demeanor, and his propensity to talk in parables. Until the day he died, Jesus was active in his synagogue, teaching about God's love for the people of Israel. The town of Nazareth will miss Jesus. He was a good neighbor and a good friend. Well, a very nice story, but not very satisfying. This could have been Jesus's obituary had he chosen to play it safe, to default to what was comfortable and not follow through with his call. Now we often face moments when we are challenged to evaluate what we live for and are willing to die for. We are faced with decisions that can determine how our life will turn out. Sometimes we, we retreat to what is comfortable and familiar. But sometimes we resolve to continue forward on our path. 
we double down, intensify our efforts and follow through with our vision so we can write the story of our life we were supposed to tell. In our gospel reading from John today, Jesus did just that. We listen in on a conversation between Jesus and his followers soon after he entered Jerusalem to a hero's welcome, his triumphal entry into the holy city. Jesus could have just soaked up the moment and gone with the flow. But we learn that his soul is troubled Jesus knew the end of his earthly mission was near, and he had not yet completed what he had set out to do. After years of teaching about God's love for God's people, all that he had done, there was still more to do. And Jesus will soon display his final act of love by dying on the cross. The trouble Jesus then asked, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? Take this cup away from me? What if Jesus actually considered a safer, less disruptive way forward? His life and our lives would have turned out so differently. It was then Jesus himself had a come to Jesus moment. Up until this point, when his followers kept asking him, are we there yet? Or when is the time when you will fully review your, reveal yourself to us? Jesus had repeatedly told them, not yet. However, at this moment, Jesus finally announced, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And no, do not save me from this hour because it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. What helped usher in this long awaited hour? What is this reason? Biblical scholar Raymond Brown wrote that what seemed like a passing detail, the appearance of the Greeks wishing to see Jesus indicated that it was time for Jesus to lay down his life. The Greeks or the Gentiles, the foreigners who were not invited to be part of the Jewish religion then, they wished to see Jesus, to learn about God's love. This detail signaled that the people on the outside were ready. Jesus, who had declared that God so loved the world, he knew that the hour had finally arrived. We heard the beautiful reading from Jeremiah today, God's covenant that I will be their God and they shall be my people, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. It was a promise offered to the people of Israel of being cherished by God. But the hour had arrived for Jesus to break this wide open, to extend God's love, not just to the people of Israel, but to everyone, to those excluded from becoming God's people, to those outside the religious establishments, these words, I will be their God and they shall be my people, these words were extended to them too. This was what Jesus came to live and die for. At this hour and for this reason, Jesus hinted at his death on the cross, the kind of death he was to die as we read in our reading today. On the cross, not only would Jesus be physically lifted up from the earth for all to see, but also, as Raymond Brown interpreted, his open arms on the cross would show that he was drawing all people to himself. The hour had finally come. So how has the hour come for us? And who are the Greeks in our midst who are seeking Jesus? And how must we move forward? 
I wrestled much with these questions this very difficult week. Legislation attempts for voter suppression. The Vatican statement not blessing same-sex unions and same, same, seeing same-sex attraction as a sin. And a particularly challenging week for Asian Americans. There is much grieving in our world and in our faith community. Our souls are troubled. These past 12 months have been difficult for Asian Americans as many, has, as many have experienced racially motivated attacks being blamed for the pandemic. In recent months, there has been a spike in violent attacks against elderly Asian Americans. And this past Tuesday, the horrific shooting rampage in Atlanta that killed eight people, including six Asian women. Not only have these attacks made Asian Americans feel physically unsafe, they have reinforced our feelings of not being welcomed in this country, in our own country. Americans of Asian descent still feel we are always foreigners on the outside looking in. Unfortunately, what happened recently is not new. It has been a consistent part of our country's history. Whether it's the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II, or you might have known about the killing of Southeast Asian American children at Cleveland Elementary School in Stockton in 1989, or closer to home, you might have come across an LA Times article yesterday on the horrific Chinese massacre of 1871, the largest mass lynching in our country's history right here in LA. This is not new. But meditating on our gospel reading reminded me again that Jesus, even when he felt tired and troubled, he did not back down. He pushed on because the work was too important. He lived and died to show God's love, not just to the establishment, but also to those who have been excluded. So imagining Jesus on the cross with his arms open wide, drawing all people to himself was my healing moment this past week. And I'm hardened by what I have seen this past year. And perhaps you have as well. Conversations have deepened as people come together in humility and with curiosity. The outpouring of messages this week from allies expressing love and commitment toward change have lifted me up. The solidarity has deepened as people on the margins come together and instead of competing in our own oppression Olympics, who has been oppressed more by white supremacy? We actively and creatively work on dismantling racism. Our souls are troubled, but the hour has come. Just yesterday, the leaders of the diocesan program group on black ministries and Asian American leaders of the gathering met for the first time to listen to each other. This was what I heard and read in the chat from the two groups. Tired, angry, and scared, hurting, vulnerable, but also empowered, resilience. We must resist and stand together against oppression for all, holding the weight of so much pain, whether we chose to and being so generous in that strength. Together we met to find strength in laboring together for justice. And we hope for more of these conversations. I was so blessed by the words of support and empathy from our black siblings who have endured racism far beyond what I can comprehend. It was a holy and beautiful time 
of people on the margins coming together and moving forward together. Our souls are troubled, but the hour has come. In the midst of all the, all the strife, this past year has been full of come to Jesus moments for our nation. And the church also has had to take a hard look at itself and figure out how to better extend God's healing love for those on the outside. It is hard and uncomfortable, but necessary work. We double down. We intensify our efforts, follow through with our vision so we can write the story of our lives we were supposed to tell. And because of this work, there is no returning to where we used to be. The holy work of pursuing spiritual and social transformation, I know it's happening here. I came to St. Luke's as a guest preacher in September, as a church engaged deconstructing racism. And you know, I never left. I've been here since because I was so drawn to the commitment of this faith community to engage difficult but meaningful change and to offer God's love as hope in our challenging world. So yes, the hour has come for us too. The journey is a long one. Lest we grow comfortable, we are poised to do more holy work. We know this love of God. It is the same love that God has started. Just like Jesus, our souls are troubled. But we press forward together because there was no returning to the comforts of Nazareth. So how in our lives, in our faith community, might we extend God's love to those who have been excluded? Who are the Greeks in our lives today who want to see Jesus? What is the future we will write for ourselves and for this faith community? The hour has come as Lent comes to an end and we soon will welcome the beginning of Holy Week. As we meditate on the cross with Jesus lifted up with his open arms in all its pain and its beauty, may we find resolve in our troubled times to push forward, to expand God's radical love. The time and the hour has come. Amen. Amen. Amen.
let us now affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoke, spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God who leads the lost and calls sinners home. We pray for creation, that the damage done to land, water and sky may cease and the spirit renew the earth. Pray for creation. Lord, 
Return to the Lord who leads, who leads us, us through, through, the through the wilderness. the wilderness. We pray for the world that all may be safe from oppression, discrimination, famine, and war. Pray for the world. We pray for President Biden, for the members of Congress, the governor, the mayor, and all who serve in government during these difficult days. Return to the Lord. Who leads, who leads us through through the wilderness. Wilderness. We pray for the church that it may reconcile the wounded, gather wanderers, and guide pilgrims to you. Pray for the church. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and our bishops, John and Diane. Return to the Lord. We pray for St. Luke's that we will be an example of stewardship, justice, mercy, and love. Pray for this church. We pray especially for our clergy, Jane, Nancy, Dean, Beryl, Peter, and Steve, and for our vestry and staff. Return to the Lord. Who leads us, us, us through, through the, wilderness. the wilderness. We pray for those whose souls thirst for you in the watches of the night, that you will keep them safe in the shadow of your wings. Pray for those who suffer. For Beryl, Nathan, Mike, Jean, Ernie, Joan, Vilma, Ron, Sue, Harry, Gracie, Andrew, Patrick, Cassidy, Rita, William, Benjamin, Anne, Christy, Jim, Patricia, Ruth, Lucille, Kim, Tony, Olga, Rudy, Gordon, Paul, Loretta, Ronnie, Eli, Laura, Fred, Luis, Betty, Barry, Susan, Dora, Jerry, Kevin, Albert. For all essential workers, all who have lost income due to COVID-19, all infected by the novel coronavirus, and all suffering from depression, anxiety, and isolation due to COVID-19, for our homeless brothers and sisters, for all refugees and immigrants, for an end to violence of all kind. Return to the Lord. Who leads us, us, us through, the through the wilderness. We pray for those who have died, that they may rest in you, and for those who mourn, that you will caress their hearts with compassion. Pray for the departed and those who mourn. Return to the Lord. Who leads us, who leads us home. Do I say that too? Loving God, we lift up in prayer those who were killed in Atlanta. Soon Shang Park. Young Shane Grant. Soon Shang Kim. Young A. Yu. Young Yang Pang. Do Yu Feng. Elena Ashley Young, Paul Andre Michaels. Gracious God, we have wandered far from your presence. 
lead us back through the wilderness that we may return to you and make your heart our home. Amen. 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 Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God.
This Lent, how might you commit to opening yourself to the life-transforming love of God? As we live into Lent in the midst of our pandemic wilderness world, God's invitation is for us to experience the life-transforming love of God. How might we open our hands, eyes, ears, hearts, and lives to God, whose kingdom has come near? God, as you placed the rainbow in the sky, you declared, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. You pledge to protect us and all creation for all time. May we trust in your presence and promise. We commit, commit to, to, seeking to seeking your kingdom. God, as you made your covenant with Abraham and Sarah, you declared, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. You pledge to make our lives abundant as we follow you. May we trust in your presence and promise we commit, commit to, to, seeking your to seeking your kingdom. God, as you brought your people out of slavery in Egypt, you challenged us to live faithfully, loving you, our neighbor, and ourselves. You pledged your love and faithfulness to us. May we trust in your presence and promise. We commit, commit, to, commit seeking to seeking your kingdom. God, as we wandered in the wilderness, straying from your ways, you called us back to you, giving us our daily bread and forgiving our sins. You pledged your mercy and grace to us even when we turn from you. May we trust in your presence and promise. We commit to seeking, to seeking your kingdom. God, as you sent your prophets to call us back to the covenant, you promised to put your law within us and write it on our hearts. You pledged to be our God and claim us as your people. May we trust in your presence and promise. We, we commit, commit to, to, seeking, to seeking your kingdom. And now, in the glorious cacophony of Zoom, I invite you to unmute yourself and join in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, 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 Lord, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy, name. thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. As as heaven. Is in heaven. Give, us give us this day our daily, our daily bread. bread. Our daily give us our debtors. Forgive us our debtors. We forgive our debtors. We forgive those who oppress us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. But deliver us from the kingdom. The power, power and the glory, and the glory, and the glory and ever, are ever and ever. Now Amen. and forever. Amen. Amen.
You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before All right, beloveds of St. Luke's, what are our prayers today? Our blessings, our thanksgivings, our birthdays, our anniversaries, or anything else that is on your heart or mind? Harry Holgate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, today I get to join the Oct Octogenarian Club for St. Luke's. Harry did say he wanted to opt for double 40. 
So, you know, however you want to look at it, he's <laughs> either an octogenarian or double 40. <clears throat> so. It's my dad's Others. second birthday. Wait, wait. It's Eric's 42nd birthday. Oh, 40 second. I heard second and I knew it couldn't be his second birthday. <laughs> so I was confused there. Thank you. All right. Any other moments of note? Jane, I sound like a broken record, but I think I, we, we should thank again for the vaccine. I, you know, I've actually gone out now. Um, I've been hugged by people. I've been able to hug people again. <laughs> and I know other people have shared that same, same yeah. awesomeness that I have. Yeah. All right. Holy and life-giving God. We know that there is so much brokenness in our world that it is so very important that we remember to give thanks, that we remember to celebrate the blessings and the wonder that is in the world around us and in our lives. We give thanks for Peter having joined us as part of our St. Luke's clergy team we give thanks for the vaccines as increasing numbers of people become eligible and as systems and structures for administration become more lenient so that it's a little easier to access vaccines as they become available. And Lord, today as always, we give thanks for those in our community celebrating birthdays. We give thanks for Eric as he celebrates his 42nd birthday. Uh, we give thanks that he sits on his couch in the company of family, able to celebrate and rejoice in their life together. We give thanks for his teaching in our community in the midst of these stunningly trying times. And Lord, we just ask your blessing upon Eric that it might continue as folks figure out how to return to classrooms, that it might be done safely and that we really might reclaim and reinvest in our mission of educating our children. We give thanks for Eric and for his commitment to that work. And we ask that you just bless and sustain him. And Lord, we give thanks for Harry. As he turns double 40, Lord, you know that he has day by day, year by year, sought to know you, to follow where you would lead. And the journey has taken twists and turns. It has been in many places, but always he has given himself in your love and service. We ask that you might bless him with good health, that you might strengthen and sustain him day by day, and that as he joins our community of octogenarians at St. Luke's, that he might join that stellar community and be just another bright light shining in our midst, teaching each and every one of us what it means to shine brightly, to love deeply, and to follow God's way. God bless Harry, watch over him, strengthen and sustain him, that he might serve you day by day. And God, we ask your blessing on each and every one of us in our community of St. Luke's. And so in our tradition, 
of Lent, I invite you to bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now... Announcements, really, um, you do know Holy Week's coming, right? Next Sunday, Palm Sunday. And then, truly, the journey continues. Women of the Cross on Monday, Pese on Tuesday, Tenebrae. The Shadows of Our Times on Wednesday, an agape meal with hand washing and sharing in the blessing of a simple meal, including bread and wine or grape juice. Good Friday with a 12 to 3 last words and 7 p.m. Estaciones de la Cruz. 9 a.m. Saturday morning. Holy Saturday service, 8 p.m. Saturday evening, the diocesan Easter vigil, and then back for Easter. So come Palm Sunday, next Sunday, and all the days that follow. Just clear your calendar. Just clear it. Journey with St. Luke's journey with Jesus. I think the rest is this week is our last week of Lent. If you haven't been to one of our Lenten groups, it's not too late. Come this week. Why not? Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not an announcement, but from our Facebook family, if we can just keep Trini in our prayers so that he may heal. Um, and be strong enough for surgery, that would be great. Please continue to pray for him and for all of our Facebook family that just joins us every every Sunday. Amen. And Blair and our entire community of singers under Guthi, again, week by week, thank you for blessing us with your presence. It is, we, we, we are blessed in ways that I fear most congregations aren't, but we're glad. We're, we're glad. We are grateful. Amen. And so, Steve, do you want to, to send us on our way and into our coffee hour conversation with Peter? And now, my friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank, Thank God. God. Be to God.
I will never do this without having my lunch first. Thank you all for joining us and for our Facebook friends and family. Don't forget next week to gather your palms, lettuce leaves, anything green to wave around for our service. <laughs> and um, continue to put your prayer requests on the comments because we will be praying the whole week for all of you. So thank you and we'll see you next Sunday. And for our Zoom people, stick around because we have a wonderful conversation with Peter coming up. <laughs>